topics do come out to different programs to talk to parents and kids about the importance of really knowing what the signs and symptoms are because something that Gail said to me is why Tina and I come out all the time to do these programs when we could be home um, you know with our families but she said if I had seen a program like this because we were doing a program similar at the time um, she said if I had seen a program like this would I have been able to stop what happened to my son? She said, I will never know, but I would have had a better chance understanding what the signs and symptoms are. And that is really our goal here tonight. It's not to scare you, and I see that you really went through the bedroom, you did a good job ransacking it and, and checking things out. I saw somebody looking behind the poster and books and in the clothing, and that's what we wanted you to do. We don't want to scare you, and we don't want you to go home tonight and rip apart your kid's room. Um, because that's not our goal, but we really want to bring awareness. If you want to know where to hide your stash, or if your kids wanted to know where to hide any kind of paraphernalia or drugs, all you need to do is really go on the internet. So who here found 10 different hiding spots up here, and 10 different pieces of paraphernalia? A couple people, how about 20? Anybody find 30? Not many of you? Well, if you kept looking, you could have found 100. And for all the spots that you found, there's many, many more that you could have found. Um, for example, when you look in a bedroom, you know, I don't know if you noticed on the checkerboard, on the back of it was, and, and just to let you know, all the things up here are, are, are fake. There's no real heroin, cocaine, marijuana, anything, pills. It's all fake, um, or we wouldn't be driving around with it in our car. Uh, but I don't know if anybody noticed on the back of the game board, or if you opened up, did anybody open up the stuffed animal and look in there? A couple of you saw that. Um, there was a bedpost that we had in a bedroom that we did. In the bedpost, things were hidden. Um, behind the posters, things could be hidden. All the different things up on the shelf. Tina, could you get the um, Star Wars? Did anybody open up the Star Wars book? So Tina's going to show you that. If you open up the Star Wars book, really easy way to hollow out and, and put you know, paraphernalia there or drugs there. Things that you can't see, but you can see in a bedroom. Drop ceilings. Drop ceilings are very popular for hiding things. Behind um, curtains, curtain rods, even behind a switch plate. Unscrew that, put things there. Behind the vents. Uh, closet, think when you go in a closet, reach up high, above over there. Very popular hiding space. Some of the things here, I don't know if anybody opened up the shore, the de deodorant container. But deodorant, so you, you would actually take the deodorant off put your stuff in, in a plastic bag or something, put the deodorant back on it, nobody would know, you could take that anywhere with you. In the boots, did anybody see the stuff in the boots? In the eyeglass cases, in the bank, and the Pop-Tarts, which Tina's gonna show you a little bit later when we're talking about marijuana, but all kinds of places. So as we go through tonight, what we're gonna do is show you, we're gonna talk about different drugs, and popular ones that are you know, popular amongst youth and young adults, and we're gonna show you the hiding spaces and show you some of the paraphernalia that you might not even notice. Did anybody notice the socks in the um, hamper? Tina, wanna just pull those up? So did you think the green socks were just for a favorite uh, football team that somebody liked, that they have marijuana leaves on them? So that's just something to be aware of. If, if a kid was wearing a lot of uh, clothing that had different marijuana or different paraphernalia on it, that, that could be a sure sign that something's going on. So our point here, again, is not to scare you, because our point is, are all kids using alcohol and other drugs? Absolutely not. And that is not the message we want you to walk away from here tonight. But all kids are at risk because there's a, mo a lot of things out there, a lot of unawareness, and we really want to help you to be able to talk to your kids. We say, all, always say talk early, talk often, and to understand what is going on so that you know the lingo, you know the slang, you know the things that are happening in your community. I know that a lot of parents are afraid. They tell me they don't want to bring up the topic of substance use disorder and, and the different drugs because they're afraid that you know if they mention it, the kids are going to be thinking or start thinking about it. If your kid rides on a bus, if they're on uh, the internet, if they see movies, if they talk to their friends, if their friends have older siblings, 
they probably know a lot more than you already know yourselves. So that's why you're really getting up to speed on what the trends are and what's happening. And there's a lot of tools that you know, can help you do that. And the best tools that you have is your alliance is incredible. The work that your alliance, that's your, your SROs, your counselors are doing here in your community is amazing. Um, and also, I, from the, what I hear from your police, a lot of the work that your students are doing, you're really empowering the kids to be a part of this and be a part of the solution. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Tina. To Tina. She's going to talk about where does it all begin. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. okay, thanks. Can you hear me OK? Great. OK, so when you think about substance use disorder, um, what is the first drug choice do you think kids uh, choose to use? First drug choice. Alcohol, I heard somebody over here say marijuana. Um, it's alcohol. Alcohol is still the number one drug choice for kids. Um, some of us think that underage drinking isn't a problem. Uh, we know through Monitoring the Future, which is a survey that's done across the country, grades 6 through 12, uh, 2016 research tells us that 33% of 12th graders and 20% of 10th graders had reported using alcohol in the last 30 days. We also know that when kids start using alcohol before the age of 15, they're five times more likely to develop a problem with alcohol than if they had waited to the age of 21 to have their first drink. We also know that there's a connection between underage drinking and other drug use. We know through research, National Institute on Drug Abuse, that nearly 70% of adolescents who start using alcohol before the age of 15 will also try an illicit drug. Remember um, back in the 80s, maybe, maybe it was even the late 70s, uh, there was the commercial, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, it was the egg in the frying pan. Everybody remember that commercial? Well, if that commercial was shown today, it really could be a PSA for the prevention of underage drinking. And I say that, I can say that, because so much research has been done over the last 25 years regarding brain development, primarily adolescent brain development. We now know that the human brain continues to develop into our mid-20s. We also know that during the adolescent year, dramatic changes are occurring in the brain. And when kids are using alcohol in the manner that they're doing so, they're affecting their brain development. And the areas that we're most concerned about is the frontal cortex area. And that's the area that's responsible for your executive functioning. Uh, it's responsible for your planning and your decision making. And the other area that we're concerned about is your hippocampus, which is the area of your brain that's responsible for making and storing memories. So when kids are using alcohol in the manner that they're doing, which is binge drinking, they are affecting the um, development of those two key areas which are critical for them to grow up to be healthy um, young adults. So I mentioned binge drinking, trends that we're seeing uh, among youth using alcohol. We know, which is, it's fabulous that youth use of alcohol has declined, but we do know that we're still up there, and we know that kids that do choose to use alcohol are doing so dangerously, and they're engaging in binge drinking, which is drinking five or more drinks at one sitting. It's drinking with the intent to get drunk. So if you look up here, and Becky has it, she's got the wiffle ball bat and she's got a funnel. Um, this is, the wiffle ball bat is for a game called Dizzy Bat. You can just Google it and figure out how to play it. It's drinking a large amount of alcohol, short period of time. You pass it around and you do a challenge and um, there's different varieties. But if you look at the uh, screen, you can see there's quarters, there's flip cups. Kids are really creative. Actually, thinking about this slide here, this is probably already outdated. Um, kids have probably already come up with better ways to uh, play games. Um, if you checked out our bedroom, you might have saw the ping pong balls, the red solo cup. In the dresser drawer, there was a ring, and that ring is actually a bottle cap opener. And mom or dad might not know that because it looks like a nice silver ring, um, but it is a bottle cap opener. Um, on the shelf, you, there was the um, flavored vodka bottles, which is on the bookshelf. Um, there was the Four loco as well. Um, have you seen these? So these are popular drinks among teens. Um, we've seen a decrease in the Four loco, um, uh, but we do see a lot of use of the um, Alcopop. So 
those are your Mike's Hard Lemonades. Those are featured up here. What Becky's holding in her hand right here is actually a Four loco, and this is equivalent to four beers. And they come in flavors like um, watermelon and grape. And, you know, we're all adults in here, and I'm pretty sure that we're not going to be drinking a grape-flavored or a water, watermelon-flavored drink like that out of a can. They appeal to youth. Um, and we have had kids report that they've split them on their way to school. Um, again, that's equal to four. Um, for for beers and it costs less than three bucks so it's a uh, it's it's a dangerous item the alka pops I just want to go back to for a second you have them up here in the screen on this picture but then you have the spike seltzers which were pretty popular last summer um, these have pretty high alcohol content and they appeal to our, our younger girls um, you the the juice and the sugar in those drinks mask the alcohol so you can drink more without uh, you, you drink more um, of them because of the sugar and the juice. You don't uh, taste the alcohol. Okay, and then we have over here um, your um, your energy drinks that, of course, when you mix with alcohol, it can be deadly. So trends that we're seeing with alcohol, uh, the gummy bears, the Skittles in the bottom of a Solo cup, you know, you, you fill up the cups with the, the candy, you pour the vodka over it, um, and then you ha add flavor to your drink, and then you have candy infused with vodka. Um, and then check out up here the flavored vodkas. These all, again, they're marketed and they appeal to our younger kids, our, our, our teens. Root beer, gummy, ca uh, uh, birthday cake, and uh, cotton candy. Um, here in our bedroom, um, if you're if you want to look at underage drinking, or you might want to you know see if your if your uh, child um, might be using alcohol, these are some things to look for. In our closet here, we had a bag that had some empties in it. Um, we also have Jello. Somebody had asked, "What's the Jello for?" Um, they're for Jello shots. Um, still happening. I know a little uh, a little dated, but definitely still happening. Uh, the gummy bears again in the bottom of your um, solo cups, but also you can put gummy bears. You can line a Pyrex dish with gummy bears or gummy fish and pour vodka over it. You pour, put some Saran wrap over that, and when you wake up the next morning, you have you don't see any more liquid, uh, but you have really plump gummy bears or gummy fish, whatever it is that. Um, that you're soaking uh, in the vodka. So now they're infused with um, uh, alcohol. And then again, in the bedroom, up on the bookshelf here, we have the Mike Hard Lemonade. Okay, um, just more items in the room, the Red Bull, um, the um, solo cups, the ping pong balls. So again, these are all these are all things. If you are in your child's room, um, maybe you're taking out the laundry, you're helping make up the making the bed or straightening up, and you come across any of these things, these are great opportunities, great times to have that conversation with your child. If they're using a, um, a, a vodka bottle for a piggy bank, you know, you can have that conversation. Hey, why are you using a vodka bottle? Could you use something else? You know, can mom or dad buy you something else to store your money in? Um, so you want to ask that conversation so it just doesn't seem normal um, to use a vodka bottle or a, um, uh, a Mike's Hard Lemonade um, to store things. Okay, so what to look for? For alcohol, um, we all know the flushed face, the smell of alcohol, um, not being steady on our feet. But what to look for in the bedroom in addition to all of those things that we pointed out um, in the slides would be breath mints, your little um, uh, uh, lifesavers, the Listerine strips that we saw in the bedroom, um, Listerine, the actual drink, um, mouthwash, uh, water bottles, um, mints. Those are all things that would mask the smell. Um, of alcohol. So I love this slide. I love this campaign. This is Talk. It's from SAMHSA. Um, Talk, they hear you. Uh, they are all about looking for natural ways to start the conversation. Whether you are making dinner together with your family, whether you are out shopping for groceries and unloading the car, look for those natural times to have the conversation about your expectations, your rules, your boundaries um, surrounding uh, alcohol use in your home. Um, everyday opportunities to have that conversation so it comes naturally. Another great tip is role playing. You know, so many times we role play with our kids starting at such a young age about how to protect yourself from um, somebody that might be picking on them. Um, we go over that all the time with our kids because we don't want our kids to be picked on. That's the first thing we start role playing with our kids. We'll role play with them 
how do, how, how do you get yourself out of a peer pressure situation? That's just as important as role playing about a bullying situation. So role playing with your child, different scenarios. How do you get out of a party? How do you say no? How do you call home? You know, so and, and so your friends might not know. You know, what's the code? Um, what's the text message? So role play all that with your children, and so that it becomes natural for them if they are in at a, if they are at a party and feel uncomfortable and and um, not safe. So after alcohol, I heard somebody over here mention it. Um, the next drug choice that we're going to be talking about is marijuana. And you know, today's marijuana is definitely not the same as it was back in the 80s and 90s. Up on the screen here, you see some um, slang regarding marijuana use. Um, weed, MJ, blunt, those are pretty popular. Um, so what's going on today with marijuana? Well, we have uh, increased THC. Back in the 80s, um, early 90s, the THC level, which is the active ingredient that gets you high, was anywhere between three to 5%. Today's marijuana, is anywhere between 13 and 18 percent. And that's just your loose leaf marijuana. When you take a look at your extracts, it could be anywhere between 60 and 80 percent THC. And then you factor in your edibles, and that could be also, you know, 50, 60, 70 percent THC. Okay, we have the youngest kids, the youngest brains, using the most potent marijuana ever today, uh, which is scary. Um, we also have the extracts that are available, your waxes and your oils, which we're going to get into. Um, and we have edibles now. Uh, again, not legal. We do not have legal edibles here in New Jersey. We do have uh, medical marijuana, but we do not have uh, edibles. Um, that being said, we do see them in New Jersey. Um, we, we have confiscated all over New Jersey edibles, but we also have reports of kids using mom and dad's kitchen um, to make these edibles. So again, we'll be talking about it. And you know, news, we know that when kids start using marijuana at an early age and use it heavy, that they begin, <clears throat> that we see a, a, a lower IQ. Okay, we also know that there's a connection between early use of marijuana use and mental illness. So why the increase in marijuana use? Um, I don't think this is new to a lot of us, the attitude that it's no big deal. You know what, it's not crack, it's not heroin, it's safer, ah, uh, you know, it's only marijuana. Socially accepted, self-medicating, movies, messages. I can't tell you how many TV programs that kids watch that they glamorize marijuana use, prescription drug abuse, and alcohol. Check out what your kids are watching on TV. Check out their, what they're watching on Netflix or whatever app that they have. Um, and you'll see, just watch the first 15 minutes of an episode and there'll be some type of reference to uh, alcohol or marijuana use um, or prescription drug use. We also have um, medical marijuana in 28 states and legalized marijuana in eight states. So the perception of harm, when perception of harm goes down, use goes up. So taking a look uh, through our bedroom, um, you, we, we saw some of these items here. This is a, the stash, really. Look at how small, that's a nickel. So these are all items that are associated with marijuana use. Okay, pretty small, easy to conceal. We had several um, safe cans and one hitters. Right there, what Becky has. Um, Becky has a zebra one hitter. Becky, can I see that? <clears throat> So this is a one hitter that um, we purchased, um, and here it is. So this opens, you put your one hitter, you, this that looks like a, a little cigarette on one side, and you put your stash or your marijuana in here. So you take your one hitter and you just pack it in, and this is enough to get you high, okay? And these are popular, and you can buy them at um, uh, stores throughout uh, your throughout the, the mall, online, um, a lot of your shops that, um, uh, sell your e-cigarette and vape, vape items also have um, the one hitters. Also we have the um, safe cans and we had several safe cans. Now when I say safe can, this isn't, um, this is a safe can up here, but we also have Red Bull, which is right here. So our Red Bull, um, you and I might store our jewelry in it, but somebody who is storing um, substances would store their marijuana or whatever it is in here. So it feels, the weight is just like a Red Bull. Um, it looks just like a Red Bull, but the top opens, okay? And, and it's for storing items. We also have a really cool, um, 
forgive me, I don't really know the correct term of what this is, an extension cord? Power strip. Power strip, thank you, Becky. <laughs> a power strip, but this really isn't a power strip. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a um, you open it and it's a storage. <laughs> hmm, there we go, there we go. It's, it's, um, it's a safe storage uh, power strip. So again, um, this, this was about 25 bucks. And again, you know, this, this would fool me, it would fool uh, mom and dad. It looks like a power strip. I don't know if anybody saw the really nice ceramic container over there on the shelf, but a lot of times your kids, when they're growing up, make something in arts and crafts and they save that. And a lot of kids tell us that what they do is uh, the most obvious place on top of their dresser and their favorite little container that they made years ago is where they store stash and, and nobody even looks there. Another way too that uh, it, a sign that you would have is if you ever saw something like this, which is a toilet paper holder with the bounce in it, your kid probably isn't doing an arts and crafts with that. Um, you know, bounce has 101 uses and one of them is if you were to smoke a joint and exhale through here, the bounce would, would you know, catch the smell. Also, a lot of times with stash, when kids have their stuff, they'll, they'll have bounce around it or even coffee grinds. Um, one school, middle school up near us, uh, a kid had his book bag opened and there was coffee grinds in it and somebody noticed it. Here it was, he was selling in school, but he had the coffee grinds there to mask the odor of it. So sometimes it's not the paraphernalia itself, but it's the things around it that you need to be aware of. Thanks, Becky. Did anybody find the camera case when you were going through the bedroom? That was like the jackpot of marijuana here. Um, all of our, a lot of our marijuana supplies were in the camera case, which was hidden in the dresser. Um, so this is a blunt, which is basically a cigar that is, um, you know, you, you hollow it out and then you fill it with, um, you fill it with marijuana. So this is a blunt. Um, again, uh, we had several in here that were flavored candy apple, um, pineapple, uh, but uh, you empty out the tobacco shreddings and then you fill it with marijuana. So if you saw tobacco shreddings in your child's waste paper basket in their bedroom or in the floor of their car, again, an opportunity to start a conversation saying, hey, did you start smoking? Like, what, what's, up with, what's up with all of the, the loose tobacco that I found in, in the car? Um, edibles. So. Here, um, in this corner here, we have something called a Keef Cat. Now, these are the edibles that um, you can buy legally in states that have legal marijuana. These come with directions. It will say, eat one quarter of that candy bar. Um, it'll say, eat one fourth of the Oreo. So there's directions to them. And there's directions to them so that people don't overdose on them. These are time sensitive, so you might have you might have a, a one quarter of that Keef bar, um, but you're not gonna feel those effects right away. So what happens is people are think, oh, I didn't eat enough, so they eat more, and then they end up overdosing on these edibles. Okay, but what we're, we're seeing is people making these edibles in their home, in mom and dad's kitchen. So you can take the waxes and the oils that people buy illegally um, all over New Jersey, and you can add them as an ingredient into the cookies or into the brownies or whatever it is that you're baking. Um, so, and that's, that, that is, and hard candies as well. Um, we do have hard candies that have THC infused into them. And again, these are things that are made. Um, and also, they are also brought, purchased illegally online. It's something to be mindful of. So I've been mentioning the waxes and the um, um, oils and I'm, we're at the slide here where we're talking about butane hash oil. The word hash is always used when a solvent is used to extract the THC out of a marijuana plant. Okay, so this is called wax shatter or BHO, and this is what it looks like. It looks like molasses. This down here, I purchased off of one of the marijuana um, websites. These are specific for storing wax. So this is a very high level, um, high potency THC. Waxes and oils can be anywhere between 60, 70, 80% THC. Okay, so they're very dangerous. Um, and this is exactly, I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to open these. This is, exact, this is what it, it would look like. Um, it's a silicone little container. And when you open it up, um, it looks something like this. This is kind of light, sometimes it's darker. Um, but this is, this, this is Blistex. It looks just like Blistex. Um, 
So again, if you see any silicone um, items and any, anything that looks like wax or molasses in your child's bedroom, um, again, opportunity to really have that conversation and, and ask about it. Um, the problem with the waxes and the oils, um, very easy to conceal, uh, very easy to hide. You can use in a vape, um, a vaporizer, and mom or dad's not going to know, your neighbor's not going to know because it's virtually odorless. It smells a little fruity, um, the vapes, um, but when you use marijuana, it's very difficult to detect that. So this is um, one of the, um, the hottest things that is happening right now with extracts, and this is called rosin. Becky, there was a, can you grab that uh, hair straightener? So we have a hair straightener in parchment paper. Did anybody find this in the dresser? No? Okay. So a hair straightener, um, which if you're a female, we probably all have one of these, um, and parchment paper, and if you like to bake, you definitely have this at home. So what you do to make this is you take your, um, your marijuana, a uh, good, good quality marijuana, and you put it between parchment paper, you close it up, you take your heated um, uh, hair straightener, and you just apply some heat on here, and the heat... This, this pressure and this heat actually extracts the THC here, and it come, you make something down, like down here, which is called um, rosin, which is just like shatter. So you would take this and you could dab with this, meaning you could put this on a hot metal surface and you could breathe in those fumes. Okay, so this is very, very um, high potency THC. It could be anywhere, again, 60, 70, 80%. But really easy to make in your home. Um, so you can use it in a, uh, with, on a hot metal surface and breathe it in. That's called dabbing. Or you could put that in your vape because vaporizers have heating chambers inside um, which allows products like this to be used. So again, thinking about, talking about marijuana, if you looked um, on the bookshelf over here behind uh, the picture frame here, um, there was some um, a marijuana stash back there. Um, in the, with the camera case, there were different um, cigars. Uh, the, gra the white grape and the purple grape are pretty popular and they're cheap. So when kids are making um, blunts, uh, they're popular. Here we have um, rubber bands, um, and if somebody was dealing, um, this is more for heroin, but if somebody was uh, dealing and, and um, you see these rubber bands, um, a package of these rubber bands indicates somebody might be dealing, but if you see these loose in a garbage can or on the floor, um, that's a reason to, to be a little concerned here. You might want to look some more and ask some questions um, because these are associated with uh, heroin use. Okay, um, again, um, we covered a lot of this stash here. Again, smoking paraphernalia, uh, vapes. This here is a grinder. You'd be concerned if you found a grinder in a scale because that, that means somebody's dealing um, uh, marijuana. <clears throat> again, more smoking devices um, for marijuana. Uh, these are make, your, make at home smoking devices. So you can either buy them, 25 bucks, 20 bucks or you can make them at home for less than two bucks. Again, this is for, um, would be a concern if you found this. This, is, this was in our Pop-Tart container, um, and there was a scale and a grinder. This is probably not your typical scale that would be used, um, but the grinder is. This is a homemade bong here, homemade smoking device, and again, that's your safe can. Becky actually has, um, maybe you saw it in the dresser, but we do have some homemade um, smoking devices that are highlighters up here in the bedroom. And our bedroom will be up for a few, a little while after tonight's presentation, so you're more than welcome to come back up. Um, Glade, uh, Becky talked about the um, toilet paper holder and the bounce. 420, 420 just passed. Everybody know what 420 is? Nash no, okay. 420 is National Smoke Marijuana Day. Um, so it's your, your light up day. It's also the socially acceptable time of day to smoke marijuana after school uh, because it's after school and it's before mom and dad get home. So 420, um, National Smoke Pot Day, and also the acceptable time to smoke because it's after school and it's before mom and dad get home. And you'll see we have the marijuana socks. We also had a marijuana t shirt. But I'm not uh, sure where, where, there it is. Um, so on, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you might have seen in different communities or at the mall, people walking around with the marijuana socks or the, um, the uh, T-shirts, and uh, there's all kinds of um, 
uh, dress for that day. And, and we also have high times. So if you have high times in your child's um, room, that's a marijuana magazine. So again, asking questions is a good thing. What to look for um, regarding marijuana use? Red, uh, red eyes, glassy eyes, loud talking, long-term use would be weight gain or loss, inappropriate laughter, uh, followed by sleepiness, and again, loss of interest or motivation. Also, visine, um, finding visine in, in um, in pockets or in book bags uh, as well, and I'm sure you saw those throughout the bedroom. So vaporizers, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about vaporizers and e-cigarettes. So um, a vaporizer comes in all different sizes. Right now, um, we have, we have uh, this one up here. Um, okay, these are m m more um, popular right now. These are called mods. Um, they're kind of expensive. Um, so with our vaporizers, there's a heating chamber in there, um, which, which allows you to put different uh, uh, substances in there. So you can put the wax and you can put the oils in your vaporizer because it, gets heat, it, it, it heats it up, and that's how um, you can use those products. Um, we do have a couple up in the bedroom that you might have seen. Um, you can, you know, you can buy a vaporizer and there are legal products for those vaporizers. The problem with vaporizers and e-cigarettes and the products associated with those is that they come from China and a lot of times they're not regulated, so you don't know what's in those. We have um, jewels right now that are, that are pretty popular. Um, and again, that's a high level of nicotine um, in those e-cigarettes. And they come from China, and it's not um, necessarily regulated. So you don't know what other chemicals are in there. There's such new products that research is coming out, but it's not coming out quick enough for us. Um, so dangerous. And it's normalizing tobacco use. And, 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 and you know, we're right now at the lowest ever for cigarette smoking. Um, and we'd like to keep it that way. But with the introduction of the e-cigarettes and um, glamorizing nicotine use, we could see smoking rates increase. But also with the vaporizers, there's the opportunity to um, use them inappropriately and use items or substances such as the marijuana oils and waxes in those vaporizers. In the schools up um, near us in Sussex County, if you're caught with a vape on school property, you're sent out for a substance use evaluation, and that's because there's such a relation between um, your vapes and your marijuana use. Um, so. <clears throat> Um, so suspect vaping, um, what to look for. If you walk into your child's bedroom and it always smells like strawberries or something fruity and they're not a fruit person, um, you know, a sweet unexplained scent. Um, strange pen-like device, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Unfamiliar batteries, a lot of the um, vaporizer batteries are brightly colored batteries like green, bright green, bright pink. It's not a normal battery like Duracell or um, Energizer. Um, coils and cotton, so sometimes you have to change the batteries out and manipulate the vaporizer sometimes, so you're losing coils and cotton. So if you're looking and you're emptying your kid's waste paper basket or in their car and you see those things, um, again, you know, another great opportunity to collect it and say, hey, you know, what's this? What did I find in your car? Okay, this is a um, tip. If if asked, don't disclose. It's an opportunity to talk. Um, we talk about this a lot. It's a tip, tips for parents. If your child asks you if you ever used marijuana, um, it's good to not say yes. It's good to not say no. Um, if you say yes, they're going to say, oh, look, mom, dad, you guys are awesome. You know, you, you, nothing happened to you. If you say no, you become the big dork, right? So. What you want to do is flip that, and you want to make, take that as an opportunity to talk and turn it around and say, hey, you know, more importantly, why are you asking? Is something going on? Okay, so it, turn it into an opportunity to have that conversation with your child because there's probably a, a deeper reason why they're asking you about it. And again, providing clear rules and expectations regarding um, your family stance on underage drinking and marijuana use and other drug use. So Sam Smart Approaches to Marijuana, um, great website. We also have Marijuana Facts for Teens, which is on the National Institute of Drug Abuse, NIH website. Um, all of these tools are downloadable um, for parents to use. We also gave you packets out on the table um, that has a ton of tips for parents and, uh, and resources for you to look at. There are things that we covered here tonight and additional uh, resources. Um, inhalants, basically anything with a skull and crossbones can be used to get high. Um, 
this guy here is huffing. Um, we see this more so in our younger grades. These are items that are found in mom and dad's home <coughs> underneath the um, uh, uh, kitchen sink. What to look for, what huffing, uh, strong odor, sniffing with sleeve, runny or bloody nose. Uh, most popular are, is right now is your dust off, okay, which Becky has here. And then we have DXM. Um, a couple of people said, what's up with the coracetin that's up here? Why is this part of the display? And they're opening it, seeing if there's anything stored in there. Coracetin is actually a product that is abused. Um, and right now, you need to show your, um, as of April of last year, you have to show your driver's license now to purchase anything that has the DXM um, ingredient in it uh, because they can be used to get high. Um, you can drink a, a bottle of the Robitussin or you can pop some of these coracetins um, to get high. So you have to be 18 to purchase. At this time, I'm actually <clears throat> going to um, ask Detective Mark if you have anything that you would like to add in regards to underage drinking, um, marijuana use, uh, or inhalants. Um, that I didn't already cover. Okay, so let's see if this microphone's on right now. This mic on, everybody? Okay. Um, Detective Zacone and I work very closely with the kids, and we try to uh, help them as best we can. So one of the things that she talked about with the little plastic thing, which they were putting the dab or the earwax in, you had that earwax thing? Um, what I'm finding out with the kids is that they're storing this usually in a refrigerator. They try and hide it in the back because it keeps it more of a solid thing. They don't want it leaking out. So this is where you'll find these things with these dabs that go into the vapor. They take a little piece of it, they put it into their vaporizers. Uh, and then instead of vaping just uh, liquid like water, they're vaping um, the actual THC from that thing right there. The, other, the one main thing I'm seeing in the school uh, for us is these jewels that she mentioned. Um, they look like a flash drive or a thumb drive or call them whatever you want. Uh, Wayne Hills High School confiscated five of these in the past three days in the, in the bathrooms. Um, they come apart very quickly. That little, this little piece right here is the part that contains the liquid. And it contains, like she said, five to ten percent nicotine in here. <laughs> and what this equals to is about one pack of cigarettes. So these kids, it contains about 100 to 200 puffs, they call them inside of here. And these kids are using them on a regular basis. They can walk with them in their hand. You don't even know they're there. Uh, very hard to, to determine that we're seeing with these vaporizers. Um, when it comes to alcohol, uh, for me, we're getting into a, a nervous time when it comes to our schools because we're right around prom season. Uh, with prom season, we see the kids coming into the main offices uh, trying to determine how many days they have left in school. They're trying to find out uh, how many sick days they can still use because they're trying to go down to shore or to the Poconos and spend a week or two down the shore partying unsupervised. Um, we're not the only school that does that in our, in our state, and it goes throughout the state, but it petrifies me thinking that 20, 30, 40, 50 kids are in a, in a house uh, by themselves drinking and partying with really no supervision, no one looking out for them. And I worry that one day some, we're going to hear something of someone overdosing or having a problem down there, and we're really not monitoring what our kids are doing <coughs> when it comes to alcohol. When it comes to uh, binge drinking in our town, um, the uh, funny stat that I kind of keep is that our first aid squad takes out more kids drunk out of the football games than they do with injured players. Um, at every game, a well, home game, we typically have a kid going home in an ambulance because of the alcohol that he drank prior to getting in there because he wanted to be detected and having it in possession of it before the game started. So they go out into the parking lot and they drink heavily um, a fifth of vodka, whiskey, whatever they can get their hands on. And within halftime, they're passing out, throwing up, and are unresponsive. And the first aid squad has to step in and bring them down to the uh, for, uh, hospital. I'm going to let Mike talk about the marijuana in our community. Mike, you want to talk about the marijuana? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, any of the uh, myths that you're hearing about marijuana and it being a medically needed um, drug, I will argue with anybody that that is not true. Uh, the state of Colorado legalized recreational use of marijuana, bringing in $58 million in tax revenue. That's great and all, would help our, help our state, of course. The problem that they're not disclosing out there are two things. Uh, one of our English teachers happened to have uh, season tickets for the Denver Broncos. She goes out multiple times uh, during the football season to see the Broncos play. And when she comes back every time, she says to me that the homeless problem in Denver and also the larger cities in uh, Colorado, Boulder, there's a huge homeless problem. People are going there, especially young kids, 
either in high school or right out of high school, and they're going to the large cities in Colorado, and they are um, smoking marijuana recreationally. The problem is, is that they have no jobs, they're living on the streets, and with also that, they are also having a large amount of overdoses on the THC levels that were talked about by Tina just a couple minutes ago. It's also bringing up their health care costs, which is not being disclosed by uh, Colorado officials because they're seeing on the surface the $58 million. The other thing, and Mark and I have talked about this during our Be Proud program, which our community is very familiar with, is uh, the damage that it's doing to undeveloped brains in the kids and how we're seeing all across the country um, uh, a lack of development in the brain, decision making, and so forth. So I will debate with anybody, Mark will I too, that the legalization of marijuana is not a good thing. There are other means and medications that can be done to help someone's pain. But legalizing marijuana, recreational use, medical use, is definitely not a good thing. <clears throat> so we're going to talk a little bit, we, uh, now we're going to start talking a little bit fast because we want to make sure you have time to, for questions and have time to come up here and, and look things over. But this is really a part that is really important piece of this um, problem that we're seeing in our state. I'm sure you've all heard uh, about the opioid uh, epidemic that people are calling it. Even um, the CDC, who does not refer to an epidemic lightly, is, is saying that. Our Surgeon General published a huge report on prescription um, drug abuse. And the problem has been happening for the last, really actually since 2008, uh, is when it really started, we started to see in our, our state and our country, this problem start to develop. But the biggest problem is, is that there are so many prescription drugs out there, particularly we're talking about the opiates, um, in the last you know, eight to 10 years uh, that have been prescribed. In fact, right now, people that are addicted to heroin, they say 60% of them started on prescription drugs. So that's why we just want to take a couple minutes for everybody to try to understand this problem and understand what we're seeing here in our community, um, our state. You know, it's, it's, it's nationally, it's, it's a huge problem. But the perception of harm with prescription drugs is, is low because it's FDA approved, it's prescribed by a doctor. Uh, you know, people will say it's not like they're using heroin or they're not like they're using cocaine. Um, it's a prescription drug. But what we've seen is that low perception of harm, easy availability has really fueled this problem. And proud to see that you must have a disposal box here in your community and that they have the mobile one out there for you because part of what we need to do is monitor the, dr the prescription drugs we have in our home, just uh, secure them and dispose of them when we don't need them. And that's really important to do. We have kids report, you know, even as young as 13, abusing different prescription drugs, mixing it with alcohol. Um, you know, high school, middle school, they don't, it, it's there, they hear about it, they see about it. Uh, and, and, you know, kids are abusing it. And it's not just kids, it's adults and it's young adults. It's really a big problem. Um, if you looked here, there were so many places that they were hidden. I'm sure that you looked around in the, in the camera, in that little case there, in the, the stuffed animal, in the little jewelry boxes. There are so many places to hide prescription drugs because they're small. And many times we are prescribed prescription drugs. So, you know, the, it, it's easy to conceal. Um, the big concern that we have, like I said, is the progression. The progression is really fast of abusing prescription drugs to going to heroin. And there's a couple reasons why, and I think it's important for you to know. Um, this is a really good graphic, and it really says it well. People who are addicted to prescription drugs are 40 times more likely to abuse heroin. 40 times more likely, and that's what we're seeing. We deal with young adults, adults, older adults, um, Many times people are prescribed medication for serious pain, for an accident, uh, for surgery, and abuse can happen quickly. And going to heroin is an easy step because there's a few reasons. Um, the heroin that we have today is so much more pure, but it's actually easy to get, and it's cheap. It's cheaper than a six-pack. It's cheaper than 
a pack of cigarettes. So that's the problem. And the face of addiction has changed. This was from a huge arrest with Passaic, Morris, and Sussex County a couple years ago where 300 people were arrested. And if you look at the faces, it's our neighbors, our babysitters, you know, uh, the people we see in the stores, it's really anybody. The face of addiction has changed, and the prescription drugs have no doubt about it, have really um, fueled this epidemic that we're seeing. I don't know what your statistics are, but we know that in our county, and they're probably similar, uh, that of our, we do a survey every two years, and I think you must do that here in your community. Does your school do an, a, a drug and alcohol survey? No? Um, but they do in the state and they do around the county, but we found that 2%, a little over 2% of our high school seniors had abused heroin. So it might sound low, but it's really not, and it's really scary to think um, that kids that young. I don't know what your overdose numbers are here. Your police could tell you that, but I know that in our county, which is not far, we had uh, two young people, two 17-year-olds that should be getting ready for their prom and uh, picking out the colleges they're going to last summer, overdosed on heroin and died. So it, it is a problem that we're concerned about. But again, it's that increase in the purity of heroin, it's the um, easy availability, and the low price that is really um, a big concern with this, with this drug. Right now, too, um, you'll hear in the news about fentanyl and carfentanil. There's a lot of different um, synthetic drugs that are mixed with heroin uh, and that are very deadly. And in fact, you know, it's changed in a year. Uh, we get to see uh, this report that's put out by the state police that shows all the uh, seizures that our police are making. And it used to be heroin, and now it's heroin and fentanyl every single day across the state. Um, it's, it's a big, big problem because they're so much more powerful. I know that we had in our county in one week in April, 12 people, in, in and we're a smaller county than you, but 12 people uh, were, were resuscitated on, with Narcan, and of those, the three didn't survive, so in one week. And they're testing it, but I'm sure what they're going to find, it had some fentanyl in it. So it's a big concern. As I noted, I think it was, you know, if you looked around, you'd be e easy to s conceal heroin and in, in, even in your clothing, in the, in the cuffs, in your pa pants cuffs, uh, in your shoes, in your hats, behind cell phones. And, you know, you wonder why when you read 25 bags of heroin confiscated, you know, a bag of heroin is three-tenths of a gram. So if you look at the, the um, cap to the water bottle, that's how small. So it is easy to conceal. And again, keep reiterating, it's inexpensive. Lots of places in the clothes, in the book bag. Uh, book bags, you know, you think you could find 10 hiding spots, there's probably 50 hiding spots. So there's a lot of different places that, you know, heroin can be found. Um, in the book, as Tina showed you, in, in playing cards, uh, the, the trophy, you know, if you undo that, really, Anything you have in a bedroom, you can figure out how to hide something in it. And the you know, guitar, you know, really anywhere it can be hidden. So there's a big initiative um, throughout the state, this, uh, you know, addressing opiate abuse. And every October now, what they're doing is trying to educate our physicians um, about this problem. And the CDC has clear guidelines. So, you know, it's really important that if your child is having oral surgery or any kind of surgery, um, you need to talk to the doctor about if they're prescribing prescription drugs. You really need to understand, uh, you know, the strength of them, how many they are. If you're having minor surgery, um, or particularly oral surgery, most likely you can get by on something besides a painkiller. But if they're prescribing 30 of them to, to you, you know, for a very short time when you're in pain, you really don't need that. There was a law passed not too long ago, a few months ago, where doctors can only prescribe for no more than five days, and that's we're talking about not chronic pain, but acute pain, when somebody's got an, er an injury or surgery. And that's really for our protection, because again, the, the uh, trip to addiction is really a short one, and that's the big concern that we have here. There's the Overdose Prevention Act. So when I mentioned Narcan, and, and uh, who here knows what Narcan is? Uh, quite a few of you. And are your police equipped with Narcan? So um, Narcan, if somebody is overdosed on an opiate, they can administer Narcan to revive them. And that's you know, not the, the cure to this problem, but right now it's saving lives. I think in the state of New Jersey last year, 10, over 10,000 um, administrations of Narcan were used across the state. 
that's huge, but it's saving lives. The other part right now, what's happening is a lot, each county is, is working to get people trained to be recovery coaches, to go into the hospitals when somebody is resuscitated or revived with Narcan. So a recovery coach, a person that's got lived experience, meaning a person in recovery, can uh, work with the person right away, right after they've been um, resuscitated, revived, so that they can help them access treatment and, and see that there's a way besides going back out and, and using again. So that's having a lot of success throughout the state, and it's something I know that uh, in our county, too, we're really working to address. So what's really important here tonight is understanding that when we increase the perception of harm, we reduce use, and that's really critical. So you're all here tonight, and again, I think it's impressive. That's just the word I want to use about your community, that you're all here on a night when you could be home with your kids, watching TV, relaxing, reading a book, that you're out here getting educated, and that you have your school administration, you have your police department, your alliance. Um, you have so many people here that care about your kids, and that's why we're all here. We're here because we care about your kids. All of us care about your kids. And besides your own kids, I think we all have a responsibility, because raise your hand if you've got kids in high school. How about middle school? Uh, any college age kids? And how about do you have grandchildren? Anybody have grandchildren? Nieces or nephews? Are you a coach or a youth group leader? Neighbors, do you have kids in your neighborhood? So, so many of us come in contact with kids in so many different ways. So by understanding, and you got a lot of handouts, you're hearing some tips, by understanding the changes in kids, part of it, you know, is adolescence. Um, if, you know, our kids do want to push, and, and we want them to broaden their horizons. We want them to, you know, we want to push them out the door and, and, and get them exposed to different things. And that's part of, of growing up. But also, you know, that what Tina talked about before is, is talking to your kids, knowing the signs and symptoms. If there's drastic changes in their grades, in their friends, in their appearance, um, in the way they act to you, yes, some of that's adolescence, but some of that can also be a sign that there's something else going on. If there's depression or other mental health issues, you know, there are, you're definitely at more risk. So that's where you really need to understand your resources. And it was so exciting to hear your counselors here tonight and see their smiling faces because they're so excited about being here tonight and they're so um, happy to work with your kids. They're your resources here in your community. Um, you need to utilize them. And you know, we tell parents, and I think the counselors will say that, when you have a feeling, a, a gut feeling that something's wrong, um, that something's going on, you know, Part of us doesn't want to think that it's a problem, and we want to keep moving the other way and not address it, because maybe if, it's, if we don't address it, it's not really happening. But if you've got a gut feeling, then something is probably going on, and that's when you need to utilize your resources. And it's really important as a, a couple, if you are married or even if you're divorced, but with your significant other, that you have a united stand and it, it, where you um, a united stand together and, and you're talking together that your kids don't think they can split you. Um, and knowing your kids' friends is really important. I'm sure you've heard that. But knowing your kids' friends' parents is really important. Do your kids, and I know as they go out to high school, a lot of you raise your, your hands. Your kids are going to a party. They're going to somebody's house. Do you ever call the parents and ask them, are you going to be home? And are you serving alcohol? And kids will tell you, oh, don't do that, you're going to embarrass me, I'm gonna, you're going to embarrass me, you can't do that. Well, you know, one of our counselors has always said, I've never known a kid to die of embarrassment, but I've known kids to die from drug abuse. So we have to remember that, that that's part of our job, that, uh, you know, really understanding where they're going and not being afraid to talk to other parents, because it's probably not just you. Um, you know, sometimes we feel like we're the only one saying no or feel this way, but other parents are there too, and you've got a very strong alliance and community, um, you know, a, a spirit that I feel here that, uh, you know, really need to stand together to address this. One of the things, this slide that is really important to show, the average age of first use of alcohol in New Jersey, this is from surveys, is 11.3 years old. So that, that's really young. Um, we also know from surveys that 41% of teens who smoke marijuana say they began before the age of 15. 
you take that further, as one in 6 teenagers admit to taking prescription drugs to get high or alter their mood. And for us in our county, which is probably similar to you, we know that high school seniors are, have, are abusing heroin. And right now they say that there's more people dying from the opiate um, epidemic and drug epidemic we're facing in our country than from automobile accidents and guns. So that's really alarming. So what you're doing to, tonight is, is learning some of these tools to put in your toolbox because it's easier to prevent something before it begins. And that's where we encourage you to really get up to speed on what's happening you know, in your family, in your community, um, in your school, really understand the signs and symptoms. There's a great website, and there's quite a few of them out there, and I think you were given quite a few handouts tonight, but I encourage you to check them out. Tina talked about role playing, and that's really important with our kids. You know, we role play, like Tina said, when they're younger about different issues, but when they're in middle school and high school, the age um, between eighth grade and ninth grade, that is the most significant increase in substance use and any other grade that they're gonna be in, eighth to ninth grade. That's where change happens, and that's where we see use go up. So it's really important that you role play with your kids and that they are comfortable. If they're going to a party and something doesn't feel right, or if they're out with a friend and something doesn't feel right, that they're comfortable. Maybe you have a code and they text you a word or something, you figure it out amongst yourselves, and you call them when you see that code word and say, you know, uh, John, I'm coming to pick you up. Something happened. I, you have to come home. So the kid can save face and say, hey, my mom's coming to pick me up. Something's going on. I don't know what it is. But, you know, going to this toolkit really helps to give you some tips. But the idea of role playing with your kids is critically important. So they feel comfortable. And, and, and when situations happen, and they will, um, that they know what to do and they know they can come to you and talk to you. That's really important that they understand that they can come to talk to you and, and have faith that uh, you're going to help guide them through the situation. So again, there's quite a few websites. This one is parentadvicenj.org um, that specifically addresses underage drinking. So as much as we're facing right now a, a, a huge opioid um, epidemic and, and concern, you know, where it starts, and you heard it, you know, with your police, and you heard it with Tina, is underage drinking is a huge concern. So really understanding that, you know, that's the area where we have to be really concerned. That's really where it starts. And, and uh, understanding that it's a big issue and a big concern um, is something you need to get up to speed on. So on our part, um, we want to thank you, and we're going to turn this back over to your detectives, uh, to your mayor. Um, to close this, but we want to thank you for being here tonight. Well, I, I will say uh, this being our fifth drug forum, I thought, I thought this was excellent tonight. I think a lot of parents have asked over the years, tell us what to look for, tell us what to be doing, tell us what's going on in our own houses. Uh, and I think Becky and Tina did an excellent job tonight. As I looked around the room tonight, I know I introduced the members of the Board of Education, but I also must point out to you how many school administrators are here, how many teachers are here, how many guidance counselors are here, and they're with our kids all day long. Let's give them a round of applause. Appreciate their being here tonight. So for the next few minutes, we'd like to take questions, and I know our two SROs are in, walking down the aisles. If anybody has a question, they could just raise their hand, and we'd be more than happy to give them a microphone. If you don't want to ask your question in public, by all means, please stick around after we're done. We'll be able to come up and look at the bedroom again, and our two speakers will be here along with various members of the police department. I believe we have Test. a question. I was wondering what that small thing you had in your hand was. You called it a jewel. Is that like an e-cigarette? I've never seen one. Yeah, I've only seen the ones that look like that. Yeah, for those of you who want to come up later on, I'll, I'll have these with me. The, uh, this is a jewel. It's called an e-cigarette, basically, is what it is. Uh, it's a vaporizer that they use for uh, smoking uh, nicotine. And again, they contain 5 to 10% nicotine. It's equal to a pack of cigarettes. Um, why do they put nicotine in it? Because it's one of the most addictive drugs out there. That's why they do it. They want your kid to start becoming addicted to this, so they buy more of them. They didn't have to put nicotine in it. It could have been just water to vaporize, but they added the nicotine because they want to make it addictive. So again, I'll, I'll have these for you at the end to show you these. You 
mentioned that you could overdose on marijuana. I didn't know that. Is that true that you can? The question was, uh, can you overdose on marijuana? Yes, you can. Fatally, most likely not, but it can happen. The reason being, again, it's how the body's going to react to the high THC levels that's currently in marijuana today. Yeah, I'm going to jump in there also. I wouldn't say it's from the smoking. It's more from the edibles and then from the vaporizers with the high levels of the THC. When they start consuming 60 80%. THC and they start consuming more and more and Tina pointed out when they eat the edibles they don't really react to it right away so then they eat more because they say what's happening is so I'm not getting affected by it I'm, I must have a high tolerance so I'll eat more and then they start having problems from it I have a twofold question the first is the ladies had mentioned that in their township they have a program that if anyone is caught vaping or have a vape piece of equipment on school property that um, there's consequences is Wayne doing anything to maybe enforce something like that? Because if you walk outside our school grounds after school, you see tons of kids vaping. And I, was uh, just I can wondering. answer that for you. Okay. I'll let the first question. Um, here in Wayne, when they're caught with these vaporizers, like we have right here, it's treated like smoking. So they, they, they're, they're dealt with the school policy for smoking. Um, when they're caught with the other vaporizers, the bigger ones that you can put uh, the dabs into them, uh, they, do, they are sent out for a um, drug screen for that. But these ones right here just contain the nicotine, so they're treated just like uh, a pack of cigarettes, whereas the bigger vaporizers, which I don't have any. Do you have any of the bigger vaporizers? Do you have any of the bigger vaporizers with you? So they're, they're, they're much bigger. Um, they're battery powered, they make noise. Um, I don't know if they have any here. So. It's hidden, they're looking for it. Yes. <laughs> Mark, she has one more question. It's in plain sight. Yeah, this is a bigger vaporizer here, um, something like this, where they can actually add the additives to it. So there's two different kinds that are going on right now, okay? And my last question, I guess, is for the police officers. I know we hear stories of our kids coming home um, from parties where the cops have come and broken it up. What are the consequences to these parents where these parties are going on? Because I haven't heard of any consequences to the children or the parents, they seem to be repeat offenders month after month. Okay, the question is, is uh, if, if a party is broken up, uh, first what happens to the kids and what happens to the parents that are uh, either hosting the party or as house was used to um, have the party and they weren't present. We have charged, I personally have charged parents for allowing uh, consumption of alcoholic beverages at their um, at their residence. They were charged, it's brought to the municipal court, and then we go to court and it's, it's taken care of in the court. So we do in fact charge the parents. Yeah. As far as the kids are concerned, uh, it depends on uh, how intoxicated they are. If they are intoxicated to the point where we believe they need medical attention, our patrol officers are immediately going to send them to the hospital and the parents are notified and uh, they're uh, released to them. If the uh, kids are present at a party and there's alcohol going on, our patrol officers will call the parents and the parents will come to the house and they're released to their parents. Does that answer your question? I'm going to Good. expand on that just a little bit more. We have a municipal ordinance that we created in our town that uh, allows us, believe it or not, to go into your home, even if you're not there. Because if there's 50, 100 kids in your house, we know you don't have 50, 100 kids of your own. Therefore, we're allowed to walk in there and go check on those kids and see who's there because they're being unsupervised by someone, by someone they don't trust. On top of that, we can suspend your license for seven months. You and your husband or your, or your spouse, you can suspend your husband. Um, so these are things that we're trying to do in our community. We encourage our patrol officers to go after that um, in those instances. And I doubt you hear about it because the parents that we do charge, I doubt they're bragging about it, that we're going and doing that. So they, they probably are pretty ashamed of themselves when we start knocking on those doors. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of, it, also, even a couple weeks ago, Mark and I have been doing this for a long time, folks. We tell the parents what not to do. And about a month ago, a set of parents decide to go down the shore and they leave their uh, child home under the, gu under the guidance of another set of parents. Well, what do you think the two teenagers do? They decide to go to the unoccupied house, call their friends up, there's a party, and our patrol division th shows up, and there was alcohol there, but our guys just couldn't find it because they cleaned up. So that was a typical mistake that Mark and I have been telling everybody in this town for years, and again, 
You don't leave anybody else responsibility watching your kid. It's your responsibility. Yeah, little kids, little problems. We've all heard it, right? Big kids, big problems. So. so as you came in tonight, you were handed an evaluation form, and we'd appreciate if anybody could be willing to fill that out as a learning tool for uh, everyone. Tonight, on behalf of the superintendent of schools, Mark Toback, our Wayne Police Department, and the Wayne Alliance, thank you so much for being here. And uh, let's not forget to have a conversation. If you need help, please reach out. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please feel free to stay around if you'd like to. We'd be more than happy to talk to you. Thank you and have a good night.